Hello. Um, I am just trying to get this Twitter Live thing set up. Give me a second. Thank you. Hey everyone, uh, this is Zaki. Uh, I am uh, I'm doing the sommelier launch uh, announcement, uh, fundraising announcement AMA um, on uh, uh, today uh, on Twitter Live. Um, and so I am hanging out here. Um, uh, Tarek and team is gonna be uh, sort of feeding back questions. You can. Uh, tweet at Zaki Munyan, at Psalm Finance, um, questions, also in Telegram. Uh, I think this is going to get shared around pretty quickly, um, and uh, I'll be ready. Um. Ooh. Um. Nice. Nice. Uh, and uh, to uh, uh, the uh, people in Periscope, I can see the Periscope messages being uh, piped back into StreamYard. So this is working perfectly. Um, the uh, the uh, uh, so this is okay. So first question: What is Sommelier? Okay, so Sommelier is a protocol. Uh, first and foremost, it's a protocol that's designed as a coprocessor for Ethereum. So what does that mean? What does a, 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 a coprocessor um, uh, mean? So uh, my vision of, you know, what blockchains are, what um, uh, what blockchains are, what uh, what the what uh, what blockchains are, what uh, Ethereum is, um, is that we are building these like secure computers, uh, these secure CPUs, these CPUs uh, where programs can run and those programs um, have very strong security properties um, uh, associated with them. Um, and Ethereum is, is sort of magical and special as kind of like, um, kind of the most uh, uh, secure computer out there um, in just in terms of the number of people who are observing it, uh, the difficulty of interrupting or altering its, its uh, its protocols and its computations. Um, and so it's an incredibly great place to run software. Um, and that's why we've seen like this explosion of value um, created by having this like globally available world computer, uh, world supercomputer, world secure computer. Um, but the way I think about this also is um, that that CPU, that protocol can't do anything. Um, uh, the very things that make it super secure um, and hard to change um, also make it uh, a, 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 a slow process uh, to evolve its capabilities. Um, and so one of the things that you've seen throughout the history of computers, of like soft, of, of building computers, um, is the addition of, of specialized coprocessors um, to, around CPUs to add new capabilities. Um, and what Sommelier is building is a, is a protocol that takes um, sort of the parts of the Cosmos stack, um, which is a framework for building uh, uh, secure computers, um, and connects it to the Ethereum coprocessor um, via both a bridge um, so that the, uh, uh, um, so that the, uh, uh, um, so that the uh, coprocessor can trigger executions on the Ethereum processor, um, and uh, and an, uh, an oracle so that the uh, uh, secure cross processor can read data um, from the secure computer. Um, so these are like sort of the core pieces of Sommelier. Um, now another thing that Sommelier is is Sommelier is a collaboration. Um, it is primarily a collaboration. It is a collaboration between a variety of entities that have been contributing in the blockchain space, 
um, and uh, the uh, and then like the building of Cosmos um, to Ethereum for many years. Um, so you know the the um, like many of the people who have been involved in Sommelier so far, I go back many years with. Um, we have the you know the occlusion team, uh, Tony, Christy, and Shella, who I've been sort of building like the idea of validators and this sort of decentralized uh, uh, operations group, uh, operations team. Um, the uh, the uh, this group of people has like really helped pioneer this idea of having validator sets um, that can that can power blockchain protocols. Um, and sort of helped me do all of this work starting in 2018 uh, to make all of that possible. And like a big part of Sommelier um, is a big part of what Sommelier is is connecting the. Um, it, what Sommelier is is like having is like putting the power of a validator set together with the power of um, the Ethereum world computer. Um, that, so that's one piece. Um, the group at Althea, uh, Justin, Jahan, and um, and Deborah have also been like a big part of, of building Sommelier. Um, and the Althea team is probably best known for their wireless mesh routers, um, but they've really taken this task of this like somewhat punishing task of building um, a decentralized uh, uh, protocol replaceable proof of stake driven bridge um, between Ethereum and Cosmos that has been sort of part of the Cosmos vision for many, many years um, and trying to actually figure out how do you make this production, like a production operational whole system. Um, and they've been really good at that. Like that's really like their talent. Um, and then there have been a bunch of people who have also been sort of uh, uh, in this ecosystem with me for several years. Uh, Jack Zeppelin, who helped me run, who helped me like sort of launch uh, Cosmos and do Stargate. Um, uh, Kevin Kennis, who has been, who did like sort of, uh, Kevin and Lucky are two devs from sort of, um, who Kevin and I actually met like at an earlier venture called, that was called, that is called Skew Chain. Um, but like we have been, uh, we've been friends for a long time. Uh, and he did, he's sort of been doing uh, a number of, of things in terms of uh, trading interfaces. Um, so that's that's the uh, uh, that's the that's the the next piece of this puzzle. Um, Kevin and Lucky sort of bring that sort of DeFi financial experience that you sort of see in this like beautiful interface uh, for liquidity providers that has manifested as part of Sommelier. Um, and again, Sommelier is is many different pieces, many different components, a collaboration of many people. Um, and then you know a lot of this uh, of this journey, uh, Tarek and I started you know. So I know Tarek Lewis from back in when we did, uh, when he was running SF Bitcoin devs, when I showed up in 2013 and was like, didn't know how Bitcoin worked. Um, and I've known him for a really long time. We did the Stargate upgrade together. Um, and he's another sort of core contributor to this whole uh, project. Um, and the team that he's building um, is, also, is also like a big part of this sommelier story. And this like beautiful branding that we have today on our website is really um, comes out of his team's work. Um, so, you know, Sommelier is this collaboration framework and like a big part of like what we're trying to do um, is expand the set of collaborators as quickly as possible. Um, you know, all our code is open source. Um, we have Discord and Telegram channels where we're doing an increasing amount of our work. Um, and, you know, this is this this sort of uh, announcement continues us on this journey of decentralization um, and sort of uh, uh, expanding the pool of collaborators who are participating in it. Um, okay, so there's a question. So the next question is, um, how does Sommelier relate to the Cosmos protocol? Um, and uh, the uh, the um, the uh, Sommelier is um, is 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 built on top of the Cosmos protocol, um, and it's really about leveraging sort of like what is unique about I think the Cosmos protocol. Uh, well, Cosmos is like many, many different things. Um, and, you know, it's almost frequently too many things, you know, it's Tendermint, it's IBC, it's all this like vast ecosystem of software that has been has been built around Cosmos that you see popping up all over these places. Um, but one of the things that I really think about Cosmos as is it's an automation, is, is, is the Cosmos SDK is how you build automation to coordinate a validator set. Um, 
And so we're taking these pieces, the gravity bridge that Althea had been work, has been working on, um, the Cosmos SDK, um, the, the, these pieces of the protocol, um, and really asking the question, not so much how does this build, relate to the internet of blockchains, but how does this relate specifically um, to Ethereum and EVM-based DeFi? Um, and where can you augment EVM-based DeFi with the flexibility um, that is possible within the within the Cosmos SDK? Um, and so that's sort of the sort of global framework in which we are operating for Sommelier. That's the that's the problem domain that we're operating over. Um, what we've identified is this idea. So what we've identified is this idea of the impermanent loss problem um, as as like a particularly interesting uh, 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 place to operate simply because like, so, okay. So like general thought here, one is like constant function market makers are like this, like incredibly beautiful solution to this, like a, like timeless human problem, which is like, how do you, like, how do you exchange? Um, how do you exchange? How do you exchange digital things? But in general, like how does exchange and price discovery happen? Um, how do you make this so that there isn't uh, uh, so that the ex so that exchange doesn't require sort of this middle entity that is the um, that like has a lot of control over like the terms under which exchange happens? Um, you know, and so like constant function market makers and all of these layers that can be built on top of them are like a nearly like perfect solution. Um, and you've seen that near perfect solution um, uh, kind of, um, you, you've seen this near perfect solution sort of manifest in the way that the, um, you, you see this near perfect solution manifest in the way that the, um, you see the this near perfect solution manifest in like the explosion of trading activity. Um, on constant function market makers, and so there's a lot of a lot of work has gone into seeing after the needs of of, of traders on uh, uh, constant function market makers, like routing orders, finding the best like the best pool, like the most liquid pool to realize your trade. You see all of this like layers of stuff of activity that's built on, but there's actually enough you know. There's one side of that, which is the trader, and the other side of the tra of this is the liquidity provider. Um, and we, you know, a big part of like what I've been thinking about with Sommelier, um, and like has kind of been driving our our sort of product side of building this protocol, is thinking about this like unmet need of how do you make being a liquidity provider amazing? Um, how do you make it so that like you don't need a lot of sophistication to sort of participate in this liquidity provider world. Um, and one piece of it is tooling. Um, and it's just tooling, making information available, helping understand how you, what your participation in liquidity. And if you kind of look at like the, the uh, AMM, ba AMM based world, you see a lot of tools for traders. You don't see a lot of tools for liquidity providers. What that tells me is that the liquidity provider world um, is very focused on the um, the liquidity provider world is very focused on like very sophisticated actors who are building these tools in house. Um, and so you're starting to see these tools for liquidity providers manifest through our uh, our you know app.sommelier.finance interface. Um, the uh, um, the uh, uh, the uh, so these pieces of this piece here um, is um, is uh, uh, this piece of the of the of of the constant function market maker world. So on one hand, you need uh, better tooling, better tools to visualize data, better easier ways to get into um, easier ways to get into liquidity positions, get out of liquidity positions, etc. And all of that can be made a lot easier to do. Um, and you're starting to see that in the tooling that we're starting to release. Um, but there's also this missing piece here, which is um, you can't represent inside of the EVM um, the idea of um, monitoring a position, uh, uh, checking your exposure, computing whether or not you still want to be in that position. Um, 
And the way being a liquidity provider functions is it's this exotic option. It's this uh, saddle option that is like a thing that has existed in, uh, 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 um, uh, that exists in the, in the, in the, um, in this sort of, sort of professional finance world, but it's not something that consumers are typically exposed to. Um, and one of the things that like is basically counterintuitive of being exposed to something like this is that if you're in this, if you're in a liquidity provider position and one of your, one of your tokens moons, um, you actually lose exposure to that token. You get rebalanced out of it. Um, and that's usually like not exactly a position that's like intuitive um, to end users. Um, and you, uh, and like the unintuitiveness of the risks of, the, and like the sort of information asymmetry around this risk is like, in my mind, why, you know, responsible people have been sort of reluctant to sort of say like, Everyone, every token holder should just open up a, a, a um, didn't every token holder should open up a, every token holder should uh, uh, like be a liquidity provider instead of just uh, hodling tokens. Um, and so when you actually go in, when you when you so so this that asymmetry is the reason why people haven't stepped into this. And so Millier wants to solve this as kind of like our initial sort of proof of that there's a viable use case that like augmenting the EVM with with a, a Cosmos based coprocessor actually solves a problem for real users. Um, and so that's been that's been sort of the driving force of the protocol development um, uh, uh, is uh, as things have been going on. Um, so there's a question, right? Did Bancor fix this? And then there's like the broader question um, as to like whether or not this is the right solution um, for for this for like giving for making people want to participate more in the um, in the in this problem and okay so there's like like I would I would argue like so like it's it's pretty it's it should be relatively clear that like trying to extend the EVM with like a coprocessor protocol is not like an easy solution from an engineering point of view. Uh, it introduces a lot of additional like overhead and complexity um, that the team at Sommelier and like the group of people who are collaborating on this are like very uniquely qualified to solve. And the infrastructure we've built for Cosmos is very powerful for solving this problem. But that doesn't necessarily mean that like this is the only way to solve the problem. Um, so we, I have spent a lot of time um, thinking about um, and like working with, you know, our collaborators on you know, is this the right problem to solve? Is there, is there, is there just an easier way to do it? And there seems to be like a couple of different flavors of, of that question. So one question is basically um, the idea is you uh, uh, compute the the rebalancing um, and then you socialize the the, the opportunity cost. Um, and so you just say this is, and that's basically the Bancor approach. Um, there are a number of other approaches where it's basically like. Um, there is a token that gives you access to trading fees across the entire sort of uh, a platform um, and people's uh, exposure or like their sort of uh, opportunity costs or impermanent loss to from uh, it will be made up for by paying them off in this new token. Um, and the uh, and this is the this is the uh, the sort of. Uh, this is one approach to the problem. The other approach to the problem is is like the sort are, are like using various forms of either leverage um, or options uh, in order to make sure that you have for the expo for, that you offset the exposures that you're losing, like the uh, the risks of being rebalanced um, with gains. So basically, like hey, like the the naive way of thinking about this is. Like, okay, like I'm worried that I'm gonna get rebalanced out of ETH um, into, uh, into, I don't know, DAI uh, or another coin if ETH goes up. So what I'm gonna do is have an, a countervailing leveraged long bet on ETH um, that will expand, will go up uh, uh, a lot in, uh, uh, um, in value uh, in if, 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 uh, uh, if ETH goes up, you know, if we have an ETH bull market. Um, 
so like these are all perfectly like from a purely financial point of view these are all like sensible solutions to the problem um and they can even be made capital efficient um what i don't think they are is like super uh, uh appealing solutions to sort of expanding the liquidity provider community to like sort of the wider token hodler like crowd um because just understanding now this like like you've taken a position that was like already somewhat complicated to understand the uh the sort of expected value of the per position and how it was going to perform over time and you've added all of these uh additional bells and whistles um that will all also have complex properties to understand um and i guess the kind of the goal of of sommelier in terms of expanding the the sort of world of um the 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 possibility space of ethereum defi is to have something that is on a on the protocol level technically fairly complex um but assuming that you have an incentive aligned correct functional fault tolerant set of uh, uh and uh validator set and set of protocols operating under this the um then you're able to um uh then you're able to actually go in and say uh, to the end user, this is like a simple uh, 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 participating as a liquidity provider is simple, easy to understand, and what you'll uh, uh, what you're going to accomplish. Um, cool. I need more questions, guys. Um, I guess the question that I was asking is: This is connecting Cosmos to Ethereum DeFi. Um, Correct. That's not an inaccurate uh, uh, um, uh, uh, thought process there, but I think that there's an ultimate question as to like why should Cosmos be connected to the to Ethereum DeFi? Um, and I think by like sort of focusing on this particular impermanent loss problem, we're trying to like sketch out like the answer to why. Who's on the team? Um, yeah, so I, I, I kicked us off by mentioning a little bit that, uh, uh, who's all participating in this, in this collaboration. Um, and honestly, I like, I've never been a fan of the word team, uh, in, in Cosmos in, in like blockchain vertical development, because it does sort of emphasize the in-group out-group aspect of it. But there are a bunch of people who've been collaborating here. Um, uh, there's been a bunch of people who have been collaborating here for several months, um, sort of imagining this and bringing this to life. Um, the Althea team who's been working on the bridge, the um, who've been bringing Justin, Jahan, and Deborah um, have brought like this enormous like attitude around uh, performance engineering that basically um, and reliability, uh, which is really key to making this all work. Um, the occlusion team, Tony, Christy, and Shella, who've been working on, uh, who've been like helping us with both, who've been like really like, you know, one of the things that again is is sort of uh, 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 different about this compared to like, just sort of like, we're gonna deploy a smart contract based uh, uh, um, uh, 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 um, a smart contract based um, a smart contract based uh, DeFi solution is that there's a, like a lot of ops and a lot of hardware and a lot of complexity from that to build something like this. Um, and so, you know, we have been running data centers, running cryptocurrency infrastructure across this like hybrid secure security oriented hybrid cloud infrastructure for many years. Um, and we're really extending that now into this new domain with what we're doing with Sommelier. Um, Okay, so there's a question: Are do we get anything for providing uh, liqu uh, liquidity through Sommelier today? Um, the short answer to that question is no. Um, we aren't announcing any sort of uh, liquidity farming or uh, incentives yet today. Um, our tools are all sort of very much in an alpha state, um, and we are just encouraging people to uh, um, uh, to play with them and give us feedback now and see if they add value to them. Uh, uh, but um, you know, uh, the idea of like, so, you know, the vision is Sommelier is going to be a decentralized protocol. Um, Sommelier is going to be governed by a community, um, that like, I think that like sort of, um, like liquidity provider incentives are perhaps like, like, 
when I, I was talking earlier about how like beautiful a solution to um, the problem of price discovery um, that like constant function marker makers are um, and like, you know, the uh, uh, like how amazing it is how that like Uniswap has like shown the way there. Um, and the, um, and the, uh, uh, so we, we are, we, so that piece is like really key to me. Um, and like one of the things that's really beautiful about constant function market makers is the fact that you can tie incentives to staking LP tokens, um, because it's basically everything that is glorious and good, um, about paying mean, market makers to, uh, uh, increase liquidity, but nothing that's bad. So as community governance um, in, in Tomelier sort of gets spun up, um, I expect figuring out how to do uh, uh, LP incentives will be a, will be a key thing um, for the protocol. Um, and then there's, this, so uh, our, my, the, the, our friends running the uh, Sommelier account have another question, which is what can we do in Sommelier today? Um, so what we're doing, what we are doing, what what app.sommelier.finance has today um, is a set of tools for help, helping you understand like opportunities um, and uh, what's going on in your 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 liquidity provider positions, um, and the um, and the uh, and 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 like having that piece come together. Um, and then like also like see once you, if you see a liquidity provider position that you want to enter, making it very easy um, to enter that liquidity provider, just starting with a base asset of ETH without having to like fine tune, having the correct uh, ratios of assets uh, together with this add liquidity function. Cool. Ah, when mainnet was the next question. Um, so we have been grinding for about two months right now on uh, getting an end-to-end -end test net up and running. Um, and if you kind of go and look at our GitHub, you will see all of our grinding on, on that. Um, the next major milestone is getting that end-to-end -end test net up and running. Uh, we are close. Um, if you've been, gone through launches with me before, close can take a little while. Um, and uh, um, uh, and those are our key pieces. Um, ooh, Raj has a great question. Any vision for how Sommelier would work with order book DEXs or other chains? Um, so for sort of uh, uh, other DEX structures, um, I don't real. I haven't really thought too hard about it. Um, uh, I think that the, the that that on, on the whole, I've been focused on the constant function market maker space. Um, because I think honestly, like what's exciting, like order book de based DEXs will continue to, and like, like, so there are like, you know, there are four kinds of exchange that are like order books, there are RFQ systems, um, or there are three kinds of exchanges. There are order books, RFQ systems, and um, there are constant function market makers. Um, and the, um, uh, and the interesting thing about constant function market makers is they are the only one of these systems that sort of democratizes access to the market making function. Um, I think, uh, uh, Eric, Eric Voorhees called this like crowdsourced Citadel. And I really like this, uh, uh, I, I really like this framing and I think this framing is really important. Um, and so mostly that's how I'm thinking about where sommelier, uh, can play a role. Like, yeah, I don't want to speculate too, too hard, uh, against, uh, uh, this, um, the, the, uh, the, the token question, um, has come up, um, and, you know, this is a cosmos proof of stake network that we're building. Um, and so there will likely be, uh, a token of some sort in the near in the in the relatively near future when the protocol is ready to operate in a decentralized manner. Um, but we have nothing to announce right now. Um, uh, how will this tie into IBC? Um, so in many so IBC has this like so you know again a lot of people a lot of emphasis and has gone into IBC 
um, as a token transfer protocol. But actually, like one of the really sort of neat things about IBC is it is actually absolutely actually absolute. It is application agnostic, and probably one of the most exciting applications for IBC that's out there is what are called interchain accounts, um, and that's. And basically, you can sort of think of what we are doing with um, on the Ethereum side as interchain accounts, but for for Ethereum um, using uh, the Gravity Bridge, um, and um, as the uh, as the sort of AMM space in the Cosmos expands, um, the same sort of logic that we're running on Sommelier for Ethereum could potentially be also applied over IBC. Uh, but you know the the focus for us is is Ethereum right now. Um, what trends do you see emerging in DeFi over the next year? Um, I honestly like what I think is so exciting about sort of starting to build in DeFi is like you know Cosmos was a very long and I think like directionally very correct bet to do something that was very very hard both in terms of like building proof of stake um, and then building like a, a protocol like IBC that sort of allows for this like very lightweight interoperability um, uh, between the um, uh, between blockchains. Um, I think DeFi has like ex exceeded the, at least my ability to kind of foresee like all of the different things that might evolve. Um, I I think that like a big part of like what 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 being in the sort of DeFi mix right now is just like a constant stream of new behaviors um, and sort of interesting use cases for protocols and rapid evolution um, and I think that's that's a big part of like uh, what I see. I do think that like it is uh, that the trend we're seeing towards DeFi becoming multi-chain centric um, is going to be. Uh, uh, is going to be um, uh, robust. Um, is the plan for Cosmos to include uh, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum to IBC? Um, um, so, okay, I, I'm going to actually jump down to this third question. What can an average person do to help, i.e. testing? Um, like a big part of what we're trying to figure out with Sommelier is like if you're if you're a, a, a cryptocurrency enthusiast um, and you hold tokens but you haven't been a liquidity provider before, what do you need to actually become a liquidity provider? Um, I think that's the question that Sommelier really wants to answer um, now that we're sort of out in the world. Um, and uh, like if you are an average person. Um, you can come to app.sommelier.finance. You can look at these different liquidity provisions. You could put small amounts of money into Uniswap liquidity pools, um, use our tools, and tell us what the experience is like. Um, like, what does it take for that experience to actually be, like, really high quality um, and sort of open to the average token holder? Um, that's really the key from, from my point of view, and that's the biggest thing that anyone can join our community and really help us figure out. Um, I'd say like overall overwhelming focus is like in a world where there are going to be constant function market makers on every chain everywhere in the world. Um, if being a liquidity provider is something that only a crypto fund can do, um, I think we've missed a little bit of the message on uh, democratizing finance. Um, and I, uh, um, I, I wouldn't want that to happen. Um, uh, the question is, who are Sommelier's competitors? Um, we are operating in a space in which there are a number of different solutions. Um, on, we're operating in a space with a number of different solutions. Um, there are projects like Gelato, et cetera, that are building sort of uh, automation frameworks for uh, for Ethereum that have a similar flavor to like what we're doing on the coprocessor side. Um, virtually every constant function market maker system is trying to do something for, for a permanent loss. Um, and uh, there's a lot of uh, explorations of this dimension. 
There are there are sort of new DEXs with new designs popping up all the time. Um, okay, so Jack asks, um, what are some other LP tools you are excited about building beyond just um, IL protection? Um, I think the other thing that like, so in terms of, 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 of spinning up, uh, 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 like, so there's two things, there's like one piece of it is that like the, um, is that I'm very interested, is like, I'm very interested and focused on, uh, uh, you know, the big Ethereum based high volume DEXs. Um, that's like clearly the right place to start. But as we, as the sort of multi-chain aspect of the system, Um, as the, as the multi-chain aspect of this system expands, the, um, as the multi-chain aspect of the system expands, we're going to be, um, like the other problem that liquidity providers are going to face is like, what, like what venue essentially, like, uh, should we be on in, uh, uh, in the constant function market maker on this, uh, uh, on, a, on this roll up? on this CK roll up? Should we be on this side chain? Like even with like trying the same asset base, like how do you actually deploy liquidity uh, intelligently? And you know, that's kind of the general direction that this architecture is headed, um, is helping users not just figure out, um, protect them against loss, but actually ensure that their liquidity is being deployed kind of in the best possible manner. Um, so, Kind of want to wrap up now. Um, I could take like one or two more questions um, if there are out there. The uh, the gravity bridge seems like a great bridge to Ethereum. It's the goal of Cosmos with Ethereum. Um, the goal of Cosmos relative to Ethereum is like augmentation, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, um, the, uh, the, the goal of Cosmos relative to Ethereum, um, is the, uh, the goal of Cosmos relative to Ethereum is really augmentation and increasing flexibility, right? Um, like, Ethereum is kind, you know, I, I've tweeted this before, like Ethereum is the first hub in the interchain. Um, and that is generally what I, the way I see it, like Ethereum's destined, like the destiny of all of, of this ecosystem has been to be a multi-chain. Um, and Cosmos is just sort of trying, is it, our goal, our, our vision, the, the purpose of IBC, the purpose of Tendermint, the purpose of the gravity bridge, the purpose of making all of these pieces work together in a seamless manner um, is to is to like sort of um, allow Ethereum to be a hub where uh, assets are, are originated and settled um, and um, can provide you know a security reference for for like other roll up chains um, and be you know a first class citizen in the interchain and by baking. Um, and like by really developing the gravity bridge, not just from like, you know, sort of like the glorified multi-sig, but as like a fully thought out protocol for interoperability, um, we kind of ensure that that future can happen. Cool. Uh, thank you everyone. I'm gonna sign off now.